You guys remember the TPP? Hey, I'm Lex, and I'm starting my video like Matt Coville because I prefer not to have original ideas. So I want to talk about three things real quick. The Trans-Pacific Partnership, the Forgotten Realms in general, because yes, this is a Dungeons & Dragons themed video, and the Tomb of Annihilation story in particular. So the Trans-Pacific Partnership, that was a trade partnership that uh, did not come to fruition, that was between a bunch of nations that traded in the Pacific. So you have Chile, the United States, Canada, Vietnam, uh, Japan, Australia, a few others. And the idea here was they were all going to meet and they were going to decide on tariffs and trade deals and stuff like that, but the person who wasn't going to be at the table was China because they didn't like China's economy and wanted to undercut it. So that was kind of the point there. But there was also a bunch of other stuff that happened with like uh, corporate things, uh, lots of stuff with pharmaceutical patents, and it's like a lot, and it's very shady and really gross, and it's probably just as well that thing didn't happen. If you want to look up that, though, it's super fascinating. Check it out. The Wikipedia page has all sorts of cool information. But that got me thinking about the Forgotten Realms. So with the Forgotten Realms, we have uh, the Sword Coast, where there's all sorts of trading that goes on. We have that big trifecta of Neverwinter, Baldur's Gate, and Waterdeep. They're all trading with each other, but then below that, you have other nations like Om with Afkatla, Tithir with whatever their port city is called, I totally don't remember, and Kalimshan with Kalimport. And they all trade too, and then below that, you have the Shining Sea with a few other places, and big deal, you have Port Nainzaru, which brings us over to Tomb of Annihilation. Now, Tomb of Annihilation, I just finished running it for one of my groups, and they liked it, and it was cool, and I think it's an interesting adventure, although it does have some problems. Kind of feels like two adventures. It's not really, th like, the end is not really thematically consistent with the beginning. People have a lot of other totally legitimate gripes with it that would be a whole nother video to get into. But the thing that I found most fascinating about it is a lot of the stuff that happens in Port Nainzaru at the beginning, and I was always kind of bummed because we spend the least amount of time there. But one of the things the book specifically talks about is like, hey, this is a big trading hub, and there's all of these factions and representatives of different nations that are all there to trade and sort of like have different representation, and it's super interesting. So I was thinking, hey, my group just finished this campaign. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna start Dragon Heist soon, and I'm gonna get to play in it, which I'm kind of interested to do. And we have that few week uh, interim, right, where we need to do something. So I said, hey, I will write, throw together a real quick adventure, and I'm gonna set it in Port Nainzaru because you guys barely get to spend any time there, and it's such an interesting place. And my mind went to the Trans-Pacific Partnership because I'm... Ooh, I'm real weird. That was a, well, I don't know why I, I did, that was strange. It was really weird. But the idea here is that you have these representatives, you have like the Lord's Alliance representing those three Sword Coast uh, city-states, and then you have a representative of Kalimshan, you have somebody from Tithir, you have the Red Wizards, uh, and they all are meeting to have a summit and they're going to talk about, with the merchant parents, princes, about trade uh, around Chult and with each other and around the Sword Coast and all that stuff. And they're going to figure out tariffs and uh, I don't know, deficits, I don't know, other things, boring economic things. Uh, and the party are going to basically, at the start, be asked who they want to be bodyguards for. And depending on who they choose, that sort of colors... Uh, what their motivations are going to be or what their employer's motivations are going to be and what they're going to be directing the party to do because each different faction sort of has different motives as to the kind of deals they want and then they have other factions that are trying to pull the strings. So as we know, the Zentarum are there, the Flaming Fist are there, and they're all sort of trying to vie for either a part of Chult or a part of the trade deals in the area or mercenary work or stuff like that. So there's all of these different kind of uh, motivations at play with all these different factions. You're throwing them all together in a pot uh, with the merchant princes sort of presiding over it. And they have their different motivations as what they want to have happen with Chult or just Port Nainzaru or other stuff like that and who they align with. And then we use that old chestnut of a plot device, a murder. So we have a murder mystery. Someone at the summit gets murdered and the adventurers need to figure out 
how they were murdered exactly, what happened, and who done it. So the way the structure of the adventure is you have the them arriving, we introduce all the factions and the major players and all the NPCs, we have a little bit of the summit, we have the murder, and then the adventurers go out, try and find clues, there's a little dungeon in there, and then the end of the second session, because this is supposed to be a two-parter, is them completing the sort of second day of the summit, the, the completion of it, and the adventurers know what happened, and how is that information going to influence how the summit ends, who's going to make all the money, what's going to go on with all this geopolitical economic stuff along the Sword Coast. So I think all of that is super interesting. I love this political intrigue stuff, and I think there's so much cool stuff you can do in Port Nianzar with that. And I mean, I guess you could do it in Waterdeep, you could do it in a lot of the other big port cities, but I just, I like Port Nianzaru a lot. I think it's great. I think it's so interestingly presented in that adventure. So it, uh, it should also leave the adventures with some really interesting moral quandaries at the end, which I'm really excited to do. And I think it's gonna work out really well. So uh, real world stuff, even really weird, boring, uh, underhanded, shady corporate real world stuff can have a super cool influence on your games. And that's just kind of what I wanted to talk about real quick. Uh, this is a video I'm posting to Twitter. I don't, I've never done this before. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it again. I just, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope, and, and, uh, and maybe I'll see you again on here. Thanks for watching.